And so external factors, how they can make you react. So what, what do you mean by external factors making you react? And I can, I can give you a, 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 my kind of thoughts on that. Right. Because I think that's why we're here, isn't it? To kind of explore, it explore some of the thinking behind stuff. They are definitely, definitely. They, it's about being attached to things. So like you talk to people and they say about the weather not being very nice. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, obviously we can't control the weather. Mm -hmm. My thing is, is we, we, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just bad preparation. <laughs> yeah. That's a very famous quote. Yeah. Like, yeah. No such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothing. That's it, that's it. You know, and we, we, we all do it. But we can't control the weather. So we have to learn the way we, to control the way we react to the weather. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. Um, people, people's behaviours. So if somebody says something or does something to them, they allow that to ruin some their day. That's mm. somebody. Oh, it's today's going to be a bad day. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've used that one. You know, I've got yeah. up and I've stubbed my toe, but that stub that stubbed toe is going to make my day really, really bad. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> it's it's a really, really uh, it's a really powerful um, field of thought that you're getting into there when you start to. Uh, delve into the idea that you are responsible for your perception of a situation mm -hmm. uh, and once you get your head around that mm -hmm. you, you kind of lose what we refer to as an external locus of control that's a, the psychological term is that thing out there makes me do this yeah. rather than my perception of that thing out there yeah makes me do this myself yeah, yeah. and that's that's a big shift yeah. once you kind of grip the situation and go yeah it's me yeah and the way i you know i explain it to a lot of people is um you can have two people in exactly the same scenario yeah. and both will be seeing the scenario from their own point of view yeah. their own their own look on the world yeah um so you'll, you'll hear people like planes make me scared mm -hmm. okay they make me scared it's like well and the plane's just sitting there doing nothing. Mm. It's a bunch of metal with components and wires. Uh, it's an inanimate object, so it doesn't make you do anything. Mm. You perceive the plane and it happens. Yeah. Because if it makes you do something, mm. it would have the same effect on, on everybody. everybody. And you can have two people sat in a plane going on a flight. And I don't know whether you've flown on a plane and seen this. For a long time. I've, I've seen many people sat on planes and gripping the armrest and their, their knuckles are going white right. and their kind of jawline is all nice and tense and you can almost see the heart coming out the yeah. throat yeah. and they'll be sitting there going oh planes make me scared yeah and you can see someone else in probably the same row next door to them and they're <gasps> so excited and they're looking out the window and they're looking at the tarmac going as the plane's yeah. taking off and they're really getting g'd up because yeah. they know they're going on holiday yeah. and they think i love planes planes make me happy that's so it. which one of them is right well that's it it's the different perceptions i, I read something that if there was an, an accident, that if you actually got the mm. eyewitnesses mm -hmm. of 20 people, yeah, yeah, there'd yeah. be 20 different stories. Yes, on absolutely. It because everybody's perception is different. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's, a, that's a kind of a hard twist, and it get, you get into the world of you know philosophy and, and psychology by by realizing that there is no reality, no, and there is no truth. No, there is just literally your finite perception of it yeah you have a very 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 small viewpoint of a very well very small fraction of time mm -hmm. and it's it's not the truth no. and you don't know all the context is behind it no. so on that note you, what would be useful to ask yourself is if you're having a a negative outlook or if you're having a negative response to a situation that that in reality is benign yeah. because you have to evaluate and go is this subjectively bad yeah. or is this objectively bad because yeah. if it's objectively bad then we need to have a negative response and go jesus keep myself yeah. safe yeah yeah okay but if it's subjectively bad where nothing objectively bad is actually happening and we're just perceiving the bad yeah then that's down to you and that becomes your problem and yeah. your way of looking at the yeah. world yeah and if you're going through life perceiving so many different things negatively mm -hmm. the weather's bad yeah. well is the weather bad or is the weather just weather weather's just weather <laughs> so, you know yeah. i feel better because the sun's shining yes the sun makes does make you feel better like yeah. i said today's a gorgeous day you know but it's like and i suppose it would be different if it was raining mm -hmm. but it, 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 so is, is today a gorgeous day is that a fact? No, it's not a fact. It's not a fact because some people will complain it's too warm. Great. That, that's exactly it. 
<laughs> yeah. Bingo. Yeah, some people it's, will It's funny it. you should say this because I used to climb at this, this patch of rocks with yeah. a friend of mine at university and he was one of those guys that would wear shorts in the winter. Yeah. And he would wear walking boots and shorts all year round yeah. and on his top he'd just wear a t-shirt and he'd mm -hmm. constantly complain to me because I'd be like, oh, I'm too, I'm too bloody cold and I'd have fleeces and, and oh, tops on. So we went out climbing in the winter, I'd be the one gibbering with cold fingers and cold toes and, I, and I'm still like that now. Yeah. And when we went out in the summer, I'd be like, this is fantastic. I've got a t-shirt on, a pair of shorts. And he'd be palpitating because he was too hot. Yeah. So there is no hot or cold. No, there isn't. There, there is no right or, right or wrong. wrong. Yeah. There's no good or bad. Yeah. It's just whether you're perceiving it yeah. so. Yeah. And if it's an emotional reaction, not a physiological reaction, mm -hmm. because physiology is very, very different. Yeah. So if your body is saying, I'm too hot, I'm overheating, yeah. that's so, a problem. Well, then you need to drink, or yeah, yeah, you need to You need to do that. Yeah. So there's, there's a difference, there's a physiological reaction. Yeah. But if it's an emotional reaction, yeah. that's on you. Yeah. Definitely. And you, you don't get to tell other people whether they should or shouldn't feel, feel other that things, way. No. whether they're right or wrong. Yeah. You literally need to ask yourself, is this objectively true? Yeah. Or am I perceiving the situation in a negative way? Yeah. Yeah. How does how does this emotion, this perception, actually help me? Okay. And if it doesn't, if it just makes your life miserable and it limits you from going to do things, then well, got, maybe you need to change. I was that. just going to say, then you've got to ask yourself, do I need to do something about yeah, this? Yeah, you to need to do something it? about it. Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I hiding away from slight levels of discomfort? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's no black and white questions. Yeah. There's no black and white answers. Yeah. You have to kind of work out: is this working for me? Yeah. Or is it not working yeah. for me? Is it getting in the way of my life and stopping me from living yeah. a, a a fulfilled life because it's yeah. actually stopping me from going yeah. you know so yeah so that's the thing about external factors and I've, I've I had quite a few external factors and I think I'm don't get me wrong I think and I've watched this with other clients as well you can see where they actually learn to not react to a certain thing but then they'll find it in something else does that make sense so you've, you it doesn't happen overnight that you actually just suddenly switch your perception that you can actually do it does that make sense it's a yeah you've got to keep practicing it and yes. and you become more aware that you're actually yes recognizing it it's it, it becomes it's a skill it's yeah. a muscle yeah and it becomes very very easy to spot it when we're all calm and and focused and we're well fed and we're well rested mm -hmm. and it becomes really easy to spot it in situations that you've predetermined it will happen yeah what's really skillful is when you start to practice it and go I can do this even when I'm tired even when I'm hungry even when I'm you know I'm pissed off yeah. and I had a shit day at work yeah and I can still deal with it in situations that I hadn't imagined it happening yeah, yeah. The, the, the real trick is to be kind of self-aware yeah and ask yourself what am I feeling mm. what am I perceiving yeah. is it true yeah how do these thoughts and feelings really serve me? And, and if they serve me to keep me safe in an objectively dangerous yeah. environment, listen. Yeah. But if you're not in an objectively dangerous environment and they're, they're not helping you in any particular yeah. way, yeah. then it might just be something you want to have a, a quick question mark over yeah. and go, check that. Yeah. I, need to, I need to question that. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Sounds like a good idea. And, <laughs> and, I, and I am working. I'm working progress on that. We, we all do. It. <laughs> we, we, no one. No one's perfect. No yeah. one's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone. Everyone gets really, really stressed. I remember seeing um, that beautiful film, uh, Seven Years in Tibet, and there was a young Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama was hiding in a in a bedroom, playing with some toys, and the Dalai Lama said. Some days I just want to hide away from the world. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's that's pretty damn human. Yeah. We all do that. Sometimes yeah. we get overloaded by life. We yeah. just need to move away from yeah. it. Yeah. But that's pretty cool. It's just to just to recognise that emotion. And it's to be well, it's to be aware of it, isn't it? Just to be aware that you. And even sometimes there's nothing wrong with having that time away. There's definitely no. nothing wrong with having nothing that wrong. time away. It's like it's like me with my van. You know, I have time away in my van just yeah. to get that. Uh, uh, and uh, that's where we get into. And everything's balanced, isn't it? Everything's yeah. scaled. Yeah. Am I having time away to recharge, away? to replenish, to have some time for me, mm -hmm. which is every human being's right? Yeah. Or am I inhibiting myself yeah. and using that lovely self-care mantra that we hear so yeah. much about? Because yeah. that's, that's the other thing. I'm just doing self-care. Self Bullshit. You're yeah. running away. Yeah. 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 Because if you're having to do self-care all the time and avoiding yeah. all situations, that's not self-care. Yeah. That's just avoidance. Well, and I must admit, I think before I actually met you, like I'd had me van for three years mm -hmm. and I probably did a lot of running away and hiding in my van, <laughs> which, which and at the time it, it would look good and everybody sees that you're having a great time, but emotionally, 
there's things going on underground yeah. and it was just like avoiding it and, yeah. and that's what you've got to be conscious of when you're doing yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a big difference between self-care and yeah. avoiding yeah definitely yeah. definitely and yeah the self-care can cost you lots of pennies which you know brings us onto the subject of self-care you know yeah. when does when self-care become a yeah yeah well again it can it can do because it makes you feel better that self-care yeah, yeah, yeah. but short term yeah, yeah. Very short. And, and is it is it transient self-care? I, I see this all the time. Um, people say, I'm just going out for, for, for a cheeky cocktail. Yeah. It's like, well, this is the fourth cheeky cocktail you've had this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, is that self-care? Is that, you know, I need to have something that's going to yeah. anaesthetise me a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I get home from work, I've got to have a gin. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. that's it. I You've got to have got a gin. got to have a gin. I'm going to have to yeah. have a gin when I get home from don't, work. Don't get me wrong, I drink gin. I yeah. like gin, yeah. but I don't have a gin every night. No, no. And I certainly wouldn't drink more than one or two. No. Does Does this self-care become a way of um, yeah, numbing yourself yeah. or, or running away? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and any behaviour, mm. any behaviour, if used too much, yeah becomes a, a form of uh, avoidance. Avoidance, definitely, definitely. It's like people use, uh, you see it with people with holidays, especially on Facebook, they, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they come back off an holiday and then they're counting down to the next holiday. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like thinking, hang on a minute, you know, it's like, what's wrong with your life <laughs> yeah, if, if you if, feel like you've got to run away if, from if, if you know how many, how many don't know how many weeks holiday we get now in the uk is it six annual weeks something like I'm that i'm not sure I'm not so sure. Yeah, theoretically every th every three to four months people are counting down to that two week getaway yeah. to somewhere yeah, yeah. Think, really so that's that's how you're doing it your your pinnacle is the two week holiday and then it's the big trough down yeah. and back up to the pinnacle yeah. again yeah like, yeah really yeah so and again i think people don't realize that so i think that you know and i think it's being conscious and being aware that that can be an habit what you've got into that you are trying to avoid parts of your life what you yeah yeah, yeah. So. and again is it recovering is it recuperating yeah. yeah but i would question the fact that somebody would need to have two weeks on a deck chair in the sun mm -hmm with nothing else going on around them every three months. I'd say, well, perhaps your life is out of balance if yeah. you're depleting yourself that much that you need two weeks lying down under the sun to, yeah. to recuperate yeah. from it. Yeah, this, this area, if you, once you get your life balanced, mm -hmm. that you don't have to sort of run away. You don't yeah. have to do that running away and you don't need to be counting that you're down your holidays. Mm -hmm. you, when you do plan something, then it's because you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because you're actually feeling that you've got to get away from your life. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. I've got to get away from my life. I've got away. That's the key word. If I've got to go, well, I just need a break. Yeah. I need a bit of self-care yeah. too. I have to get away from my life every three, four months. Yeah. 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 It's like, well, it's not your life then, is it? No, no. no. <laughs> you might be pleasing, do it living your life to please others. Yeah, which it's is someone, another, else's life another, someone else's yeah, life. Yeah, which is another story. Yeah. <laughs>